the third star disappeared behind a cloud last night. The Celtics started the day with Al Horford in concussion protocol and Gordon Hayward shooting from a therapeutic chair, and just 1.50 after the opening tip against the Charlotte Hornets, Kyrie Irving was in the trainer's room being monitored for a concussion. The Celtics guard took an inadvertent elbow to the face from teammate Aaron Baines early in his game at the Garden. Without these stars the Celtics seemed to struggle with their navigation, trailing most of the way before Jalen Brown's jumper at 5.29 to go cap the 16-3 run and guided the Celtics to a 90-87 win over Charlotte and extended their winning streak to 11 in a row. As improbable as it seemed through halftime, Celtics coach Brad Stevens still could sense what was possible as the Celtics began the fourth quarter trailing 76-64. If you get some stops and string some buckets together, this place is going to get fun, Stevens told his team, before sending out a lineup of Brown, Shane Larkin, Gershon Yabusel, Daniel Theis and Terry Rozier, to begin the fourth quarter. An accelerating roar serenaded Brown's go-ahead basket, he was 1-for-12 up to that point, and the crowd exploded. When Marcus Morris buried a 21-footer with 23 seconds left, then pressured Kemba Walker into a miss from 19 feet on Charlotte's last possession. That was my first experience of playing in Boston, when it really got like that, Morris said. Normally, I'm on the other side, but it's a tough place to play, when the crowd gets into it's like that. They did a great job, and helped us win that game. The Celtics put this away with a 23 run over the first seven minutes of the fourth, packed with all of the offense they lacked over the first three quarters. And they did it with an unusual combination on court, including rookie Jason Tatum, who scored 16 points after nearly missing the game with a sore right ankle. He suffered the injury in Wednesday's game against the Lakers. Tatum finished the run with a 20-footer for an 84-79 lead with 3-10 left. And, after Walker cut the Celtics' lead to three, Tatum came back at the 1.30 mark with a smooth glide out of the post for an 86-81 lead. The 19-year-old rookie appeared more than comfortable in the role of leader with the Celtics' three established stars in sick day. It's special. I don't know if it's the Duke in him, because him and Kiri are good closers, but he's a very confident guy, said Larkin. He's a matchup nightmare. He's six foot nine. If you put a tall guy on him, he goes around them. You put a short guy on him, he can go to the post. It's tough to guard him. He's 19 years old, so he's only going to get better. Walker's three-point play off the break cut the Celtics lead to 86-85 with 45.6 seconds left, and Morris immediately answered out of the ensuing timeout with his smooth 21-footer from the left side for an 88-85 lead with 23 left. Later, he admitted that shot was not the designed play, but a response after the play broke down. Walker scored Charlotte's eighth straight point when the Celtics let him drive with 17 seconds left. Stevens called his last timeout, and Rosier stepped out after taking the inbounds pass. But Walker, covered at the top of the circle by Morris, missed his 19-footer off the back of the rim. Rosier grabbed the rebound and was fouled. He made both free throws to put the Celtics' lead up to 90-87 with 3.6 seconds left. Related articles. Tatum, Celtics rookie questionable for tonight's game against Charlotte. Staff photo by Matt Stone. Celtics notebook, Jason Tatum questionable to play, but MRI negative. Jason Tatum injury. JPG. Jason Tatum in a walking boot after Celtics win, will have tests on sore right ankle Thursday. Boston Celtics forward Jason Tatum celebrates after dunking during the first half of the NBA game against the Los Angeles Lakers at the TD Garden on Wednesday, November 8, 2017. Staff photo by Matt Stone. Celtics notebook, injuries continue to add up with Jason Tatum the latest to be hobbled. The Hornets' last hope fell apart when Walker was forced to chase the inbounds pass deep into the backcourt. We've been preaching next man up forever, said Rosier. Lately, our team is dropping like flies. You just gotta be ready. Shane did a great job, stepping up, coming in today. You just never know in this league, 
when your number is going to be called. We did a good job handling that. We don't think about the negatives, he continued. It is crazy to see all this stuff happen. I figure that it'll all work out. I think we'll be fine, as long as we just stay together. It says we got a strong basketball team that believes in one another, and we got good coaches that put us in the right position and just try to preach stay focused on the defensive end, and everything will take care of itself.